Hey, Fox River, how's it going? Hey, it's good to see you guys. I'm glad that we can worship together here in Waukesha, Waterford, Muskego, online. What's cracking? It's good to see you. Glad we can do this thing together called church. And uh, hey, got a question for you. Has anyone ever been asked, maybe you've been the asker, by the way, but anyone ever been asked this question? Hey, what's the meaning of life? So I just want to say that is a beautiful question. And what an opportunity it is, if you've ever been in the vicinity when that question has been asked, what a beautiful opportunity it is to just help that person who asked the question, to help people who are inside of that conversation, whether it's one, two, three, four, five people. What a beautiful opportunity we have in that very moment to share the good news of Jesus Christ. A bunch of years back, uh, this is when I was in the Army, I was on a training exercise in the middle of South Carolina. And I remember it was like 90 some degrees and it was all sandy. There's like bugs everywhere and, and uh, sitting there, we're just hot. And we just, we just ate and we were just standing around getting sleepy, I guess. And, it, and it, our instructor at the time, he asked the group of us, there was probably, I don't know, 40, 50 of us at the time. He asks us this question, just out of nowhere. What's the meaning of life? And, and some people started to answer and threw out some. And then, then he calls on me. He's like, hey, Gunderson, what's the meaning of life? Because he knew I was a Christian. And uh, I'd only been a Christian for like maybe a year, maybe a little more at that, at that moment. Um, so I, I gave an answer. And I don't remember the exact words, but I'm very confident it was something super close to this. Well, the meaning of life is, is to live for God. It's to do what he says, you know. So looking back on that moment. I would give myself like a C, C plus on that answer. Okay, somewhere in there. So, I mean, it was, it was an all right answer. It was pretty good. But here's the point. There's a better answer. There's a more precise answer. All right. There's a more biblical answer. This is one of the things that God tells us in his word. And that's what we're going to be diving into today. The answer to that question that he asked, all right, what's the meaning of life, is the same answer to this question. What's our ultimate purpose? Again, that's what we're diving into today. I hope that each one of us will come away from church this weekend encouraged and ready and equipped to share our faith with others from the truth that we take in by God's grace uh, this, these minutes that we have. Let's pray together first, though, because we, we don't want to go about this alone. God, please be inside every bit of this. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for today. It's a gift that you've given us, Lord. If we ever doubted that you are good, Father, all we need to do is look at today. All we need to do is look at the cross. Those two things stand as evidences of your grace, Lord. We didn't earn either one. We don't deserve either one. But, Lord, here we are benefiting from both your cross and the day that you've given, the gift of today you've given. Lord, thank you for that. As we spend these next precious minutes together, Lord, I pray that we would hear from you. God, I pray that we would not only hear from you, but understand what you're trying to tell us. And Father, even furthermore, that we would apply that truth, apply that grace that you're giving, Lord, to our lives that we might grow. Father, help us to do this, not because we have to, but Lord, because we want to, because we believe. Please build our faith today, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Throughout the entire Made for This series, we've been just embracing a singular truth. We've been looking at it from different angles, exploring the different facets of this truth. And the truth is this. You were created on purpose and for purpose. All right? We talked about general purpose. Like what are some purposes that God has for every child of God? All right? Worship. Service, fellowship, evangelism, discipleship. What are the purposes that are personal to you, that are unique to you? You've received a particular calling from God that the next person hasn't. Listen, God speaks to us personally and gives us personal purpose. Today what we're diving into is, hey, at the end of the day, like, what's it all about? What's our ultimate purpose. Okay, Lord, why did you make me in the first place? Because you didn't have to. 
God, why did you, for those of us who have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, why did you save me? Like, what's going on there? For those of us, again, that are children of God, when we get to heaven, God, why are you going to make me new in the fullest sense? Why are you going to glorify me? Are right, you going to give me a new body? It's going to be radiant. It's going to shine kind of like Jesus' body did and does right now. I don't know exactly how it's going to work, so don't ask me, okay? But, but God does it somehow. Like, God, why are you doing that? Why are you going to do that? What we're going to get into today is just that. What's our ultimate purpose? What overarches all of this? With that said, let's get into Romans chapter 8 together. Turn there in your Bibles, if you would, Romans chapter 8. We're going to check out verses 28 and 29. Not a lot of verses, but we're going to dive in uh, to these two the best that we can in the time that we have. If you don't have your Bible with you, please feel free to use a church Bible. That's page 1610. Maybe you don't have your Bible with you because you don't own a Bible. If that's the case, please accept Fox River's gift to you at this time. Go ahead and take that church Bible. It is now yours. We know how important it is to get the word of God in your ears, in your mind, in your heart, that you might, by God's grace, that you might live it out and apply it to your life. That's how you grow spiritually, by the way, is taking the word of God in and living it out. And we want everybody here at Fox River to grow spiritually. So please take us up on that offer if you would. As we get into Romans, it's important that we kind of understand just a little bit of, hey, what's going on? Like the 30,000 foot view. What's going on? The letter of Romans. What's it all about? What's, like, what, what's the context? So I'm going to just mention two things. Nothing earth shattering, but it will help us kind of process some of this, okay? Romans, the book of Romans is actually a letter. It's a letter from the apostle Paul. Paul wrote this letter to a group of believers in Rome. Why did he write this letter? He wrote this letter to Again, this is a simplification big time. But he wrote this letter to encourage them, to help them in their faith. That's what he was doing. Now, the good news about that is God used this letter not only to encourage the Roman group of believers in their faith, not only to help them grow in their faith, but God's using that today to do the same for us. He wants to help us wherever we are in our Christianity even for those of us who are not, not even believing in Christ, not even Christians yet, God's like, man, I'll, I'll work with you. It's a big part of what we're going to be talking about today, by the way. And he wants to help us and encourage us in our faith, okay? So, so, so that's the context. All right, let's get into the verse. Enough, enough of me talking, all right? Here we go. Romans 8, 28. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him. Who have been called according to his purpose. All things. Interesting. I think we should, we should dive into that for a second. Everybody say all things. Ready? All things. There we go. All things, man. I just got a promotion at work. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, yeah. I like that. Hey, I'm a grandpa. Woo! Yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Okay? Unless you're female. I'm a grandma. Okay? All right. Hey, some good things. If you're a student, hey, I got an A on my test. It was crazy. I I didn't think I did that good, but, man, I got a good grade. Hey, there's some good things. All things. God God works. All things. The good stuff, right? God works in the, oh, what can I pick? Here we go. Bad things also. All right? The good and the bad. Um, Man, somebody's, somebody's sick in my family. Huh. I done Tastes too good, right? Like, like anybody want a spoonful of flour? Mary Poppins didn't sing about that one, did she? Okay, <laughs> nah. So, so man, some things aren't that good. Um, man, somebody's sick in my family. I, I actually got demoted at work. Man, I'm thankful I didn't get let go. But man, I kind of, you know, I'm not getting paid the same, and and uh, this is not a good situation. Or man, I got a, I got a D on my test. Oh, I actually thought I did all right, but man, it's tough. So God works in all things, right? The good, the bad, and, oh man, this one's tough, but it's true, okay? It's true. He works in the ugly also. Now here's what I really want to do. I'm not going to do it though. I really want to just crack one of these eggs open and just make a mess. I'm not going to do that. Um, but he works in the ugly too, okay? 
a death in the family. Yep, all things, right? Um, I lost my job, right? I got fired. I got let go. Man, he works in that. All things, right? Man, I failed my test. And now, you know what? And this happened to me, by the way. UWM is asking me, kind of telling me, but asking me, hey, do you want to take a break? <laughs> you know, I got kicked out of college. I did. I did. It was crazy. That was, that was, that was just a time I want to forget. But God works in the things like that, okay? He works in those things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. What are your all things? Because, I mean, I could just continue to rattle things off. But nobody wants that. And there's really not a point of me doing that. What are your all things? Only you know it. Only God knows it. What are, what are the things going on in your life? The good, the bad, the ugly. Maybe you're in a spot right now and you're just like, I don't know if I can make it too many more days like this. I'm in one of those ugly times. You know, what are your all things? In all things, God works. That's the next part we're going to dive into just for a second. God works. And we're going to pause. Because God works in the past. God works in the future. But here's what we're going to really grasp right now. God is working now. Like God is working in your life, in your situation, in your all things, in this very moment. It might seem like you're in the middle of a tornado. You don't even know which way is up. You've been thrown blindfolded into the deep end of a pool, and you're like, I don't even know where I am. I'm disoriented. Things are just nuts right now. God is working. And even though the individual all things or the individual ingredients, anybody want some butter? No, you don't want that. It's nasty. Don't do I Okay, I got a story. I'm not going to tell it. <sighs> Okay, I'll tell it. So I, I accepted a dare in eighth grade uh, family and consumer economics. We were baking uh, pretzels, homemade pretzels, and there was an extra stick of butter. And, and it, one of my friends, friends, he said, uh, hey, eat that stick of butter. I'll give you five bucks. So I ate it, and I became sick, so sick that I went to the health office, asked my mom to, like, come get me. She's like, why? What's wrong, Billy? And uh, I'm like, I ate a stick of butter. She's like, I'm not getting you for that. So... <laughs> So, so I was I just sad. I was just miserable. Anyway, and my friend, CJ, you know who you are. You didn't pay me the five bucks, man. Anyways, but some things are just nasty. Okay, all right. Now I got to, oh, man, I got to figure out how to bring this back. Okay. So, man, some things are just so nasty. Listen, the individual ingredients in life are so unpleasant sometimes. Okay. The individual ingredients sometimes, those aren't good. But God works for the good, all right? The individual thing is not good, but the whole, when he's mixing it together, is good. He's working it together for good. And just like some of those ingredients are super, super nasty. I mean, like some of the ingredients or some of your all things are so bad, they even cause you to ask a question like this. Sometimes we actually say it. Most of the time we just kind of think it or feel it inside. But they may make you ask questions like this. God, where are you? I don't, I don't see, like I saw you before. I can point to specific times in my life, God, when you intervened or when you opened my eyes. But I don't see you now. I don't feel you now. It's not all about my feelings, but God, I, I, just being honest, I can't feel you now. Where are you? I want to encourage you, especially if you're in a place right now. I want to encourage you proactively because if you're not in that place right now, it's probably coming pretty soon because life is kind of like this, right? Here's the encouragement. God is not absent. God is in the kitchen. God is in the kitchen. God is in the kitchen right now. You see, God is taking your all things. He's taking a little bit of midlife crisis. He's taking a little bit of PTSD, a little bit of anxiety. He's taken a little bit of your sense of humor or lack thereof. He's also taking your faith walk. Man, and how, how crazy that can be sometimes, the ups and the downs. He's taken all of that. He's taken all of you. He's taken all of your experiences, and he's working them. 
He's mixing them together for your good. God is for your good. Make no mistake about that. God is for your good. God is for your good now. God is for your good later. Our all things, here's some bonus material. Your all things, no matter how good or how bad they are. In fact, let's just hang out in the the bad stuff just for a minute. I want to give you some counterintuitive bonus material. In your bad things, God has given you a potential for praise. Here's what I mean. You might be going through something that's painful, but God is with you and God cares. You can, from within the storm, with how bad it might be, you can still look up to a good God. You have the potential to praise. Because even though this life and these circumstances change, our rock, Jesus Christ, does not change. He is good. Amen. Now, another piece or facet of that. Not only can you, do you have potential to praise for yourself, like personally, but watch this. What, I'll just make something up here, okay? What if you knew I had terminal cancer, okay? What if I was just diagnosed with that and you guys knew and you see me praising God from within that storm? What's that going to do for your faith if you're a believer in Jesus Christ? That's going to strengthen you. That's going to encourage you. That's going to remind you that God is good. Man, that's a great thing. Now, check this out. Same situation, but what if you're an unbeliever and you see me as a believer about to die praising God? Would that not cause a bunch of people who don't know Jesus yet A bunch of them just to lean in and say, man, you know what? How is he doing that? He's got a death sentence, but he's still praising God. I got, man, I'm leaning into that. What is going on there? I got to know more. And now you have an opportunity to encourage somebody in their faith, perhaps even someone whose faith is like not even present yet. You have a voice, another thing. You have a voice of encouragement to others. Again, off of that same uh, example. If I've been diagnosed with cancer, now I have a voice in the lives of other people who have cancer. It's like a key to open up a door. Now, I could speak to him before, but maybe now because we share that common ground, maybe now they're giving me a certain type of permission to speak to them about Jesus. What a gift and opportunity. Again, cancer, not good. But goodness can come from it, and God is working in that. It's beautiful. Listen, the world may tell you that you're a victim. You might even have those feelings welling up inside of you. Like, man, this is, whatever it is, this is bad. But the truth is, If you're willing to look at your all things in the way that God is looking at your all things, you can see the good that he's bringing from it. There's opportunity to praise and encourage others. Listen, no matter what it is, you can suffer with Christ. Christ suffered, didn't he? You can suffer with him. Whoa. No matter what the situation is, you can praise God and rejoice with Christ. Did Jesus rejoice? Does he rejoice? Yes. Yes, he does. You can rejoice with him. All right. What we just read was Romans 8.28. I'll read that and then we'll go into 29, okay? And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, That he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. Listen, God is in the kitchen. God is in the kitchen. He's taking your all things and he's mixing them together. All right, he's mixing. And 
God is doing some scooping. All right, that's what he's doing. And here's the thing. God is like, he's not missing any ingredients. Like none of them. But there is one thing. Sometimes, you know, oh, you just got to make, oh boy. Got to make the, uh, all right, don't eat that one. All right. <laughs> he doesn't miss any ingredients, but one thing still is missing. And that's the heat. Man, that's the heat. Anybody uh, like to hang out in 350 degree heat? Like anybody like, yeah, man, that's my thing. I just, you know, I just, I like it. I just like that summer is my thing. All right, no, nobody likes 350 degree heat. Nobody has a timeshare on Venus, all right? Like nobody's doing that. But that's what God uses, all right? When he's working these things together, all right? When he is conforming us to the image of his son, like molding us and shaping us. Man, that, that can be, when he's stirring, that can be painful. Like pretend you're a little chocolate chip inside the cookie dough and you're just like, ow, it's, oh, you know. Like it's like nobody likes that. All right, pretend you get thrown in the oven like, oh, it's freaking hot in here. Oh, my gosh. You know, like, I mean, some of us feel that, don't we? It's not pleasant. It's not pleasant at all. <clears throat> But God is working those things together for your good. Puts your all things in the oven, he turns up the heat. Verse 29 tells us what kind of cookies God makes. All right, if he's into that baking thing. If he is in the kitchen, this is all metaphor, but he's, you know, he's, he's, he's doing this. Verse 29 tells us what kind of cookies God makes. And, and by the way, God always makes the same kind of cookies, just like I always make chocolate chip. He always makes the same kind of cookies. And here's the kind of cookies he makes. God makes Christ-like cookies. Christ-like cookies. He's conforming us again. He's not just shaping us into like, you know, like a balloon animal. Oh, elephant. Or, oh, a giraffe drinking water from an oasis. Like it's not, it doesn't do. He's, He's conforming us to a very specific thing. The image of Jesus Christ, his son. Whoa. God is making you like Christ. He's making you like Christ. Why would he do that? He wants to bless you. That's why he's doing it. Why is he mixing? Why is he working? It's kind of painful. Why is he, why am I feeling the heat right now? He's trying to hurt me? No. No, he's not. He wants to bless you. That's not the end of the sentence. He wants to bless you so that you might bless others. That's not the end of the sentence, though. He wants to bless you so that you might bless others and that you might bless him. Oh, I can bless God? Yes, you can. It's pretty cool. God created you on purpose. He created you for purpose. He loves you. He's never stopped loving you. He never will stop loving you. He's taking all of you, all of of your experiences, he's in the kitchen mixing and baking, turning up the heat. And every time he does it, you come out looking more and more like Jesus Christ. God is for you so that you might be more and more like Christ. And as we become more like Christ, we become more for Christ. And all of the sudden, things like this start happening. Check it out. I am blessed and overwhelmed as being the founder of the organization. I am in awe of people coming alongside and and helping and doing what they're able to do. Thank you so much, Fox River Church, um, for everything that you're doing for us. We've already decided that we will be back (laughs) to do this again. Today we're doing a special thing after service. People are doing outside uh, Believer's Baptisms. 
and um, I am partaking in that. Super excited. I want to get baptized to um, publicly show that my relationship with Jesus is personal this time and that it means more to me than ever. I'm ready for a change, ready for a new life. Becoming like the best version of, of myself that I can be. Opening a new door in life, you know, full of blessings and all that. Nothing is pointless and that everything that I'm doing has a purpose. And thought, you know, I want my family to be here. And they're like, oh, well, can we get baptized too? <laughs> The opportunity was there, so we said, yeah, let's do it. That's good. Hey, maybe you're looking at that and you missed being a part of Serve Week. And you're like, man, I, I want to get in on this serving thing. You know, as, as, as God is making me more like Christ, I'm finding myself, I'm just becoming more for Christ. I want to I learn how to serve. Or this, this baptism thing, man, I don't really know much. I thought it was for babies, but I've seen grown adults actually going under the water. I don't know what that's all about. Listen, if you're kind of in that boat, just simply fill out a communication card. And it's the simplest thing. Just check the growth track little circle here, all right, just turn that in and somebody will get a hold of you and we can start to answer those questions and, and, and take this journey together as we come alongside of each other, all right, so do that. As you find yourself, right, as God is making you more like Christ and you're finding yourself becoming more for Christ, man, you just have an interest in God, all right, I've talked to a bunch of people, they're like, man, I just, you know, I received Jesus and I just, I couldn't get enough of his word, I just kept reading I'm like, man, I wish I had that problem lately, by the way. But, but he's, he's like, I just can't get enough. Maybe that's you. Maybe it's like, man, I just have this insatiable appetite. God, I love you. I want to obey you. I don't know where it's coming from, but God, tell me more of what you want me to do. It's a beautiful thing. As God is making you more and more like Christ, and you're becoming more and more for Christ, Here's what's going to happen too. You're going to show the love of God. You're going to share the name of Jesus Christ with others. That in the same way you've been forgiven, that other people might be forgiven also. You want to share that with people. In the same way that God has given you new life, you want to share that with others, that they might receive new life also. That Jesus would have many brothers and sisters that he would be the firstborn of many brothers and sisters, not just me and the next person, but many. That if God will allow it, somehow, some way, that every person who's breathing, that Jesus would be king of their heart. God is for you, that you would be for him. That's what he's doing. God's for you that you would be for him. Because when you're for him, you bring him glory. And that's where we're landing today. Like if you didn't hear anything else, I hope you did. But if you didn't, this is where you want to land. This is what you want to remember this week. Your ultimate purpose is to glorify God. That's why I was born in 1979 at Mount Sinai Hospital in downtown Milwaukee. That's why. That's why at age 19, after 19 years of shenanigan after shenanigan, God's patience was at work. And he received me and I was saved at age 19. That's why, because my ultimate purpose is to glorify God. That's why he's put up with me even though my Christian walk has been far less than perfect. That's why he's put up with me. That's why he's working my all things. That's why he's working these things together for my good so that I might glorify him now and later. That's my purpose. That's your purpose. That's why he's working those things together. 
Listen, God is good. He, he is so good. He's worthy of all praise. When we become like Christ, we glorify him just like Jesus did by worshiping and praising. That's one of the things that it means to glorify God. He's good. Let's recognize that. And let's just, man, God, I applaud you. You're just awesome. Listen, God is good and he's done good things. If I want to glorify God with respect to that, here's what I can do. Here's what you can do. Tell people what God has done in your life. Tell people about how good he is. Share it that others might applaud God just like you are. And God is making you good. Oh, goodness, he is. God is making you good. Oh, those look good. Those do. God is making you good. Be encouraged in that truth. Be encouraged that he is going to make you into a yummy Christ-like cookie. Ah, yeah, I like that part of the message, yeah. <laughs> Be encouraged. And, and this conforming that God is doing, okay, this shaping, this molding, this stirring, this mixing, this heating, all of that. Listen, we can go through that with an attitude of resistance. I don't like this, God. I get you know, just fighting, like, the whole time. Or... Now that we know this, we have a choice. We have the freedom and the grace to make this decision. Watch. Instead of resisting, what if we participated and cooperated? God, you know as well as anyone, Jesus, you gave your life. You died on the cross. God, you know this is true. This is just unpleasant right now. But I'm going to trust you. Okay, let's do this. You have the choice to do that. You have the choice to make some changes in your life. You have the choice to make some changes in your thinking. To rest. When things are going haywire, you can rest. Knowing that God is in the kitchen. You can also adjust your thinking with this. He's not going to kick you out of the family. How can we say that from these two verses that we talked about? Because he's working in all things. He's working even in, listen, don't miss this, even in the sin. Is the sin good? No, but he's bringing good from it. He's not kicking you out of the family. He doesn't hate you. He's not shunning you. He's not turning his back on you. Listen, he's in the kitchen and he's working for your good. You can make some changes in your actions. Listen, you can be a Christ. You can bring God glory by being a leader for Christ in your home. You can bring God glory by being an example of Christ in your workplace. I'm not gonna cut corners anymore. I've done it for years maybe, but I'm I'm gonna stop. God, help me to stop. I'm gonna stick out like a sore thumb, but but God, that's peripheral. God, I'm gonna gonna do this for you. I'm gonna be an example of Christ in my workplace. You can be a servant for Christ in your neighborhood as you serve your neighbor, as you help them with X, Y, Z tasks, as you go up to them and maybe even make a fool of yourself. How can I pray for you? You have the opportunity to bring you, bring God glory. You can glorify God. You were made for this. Now, one of the most exciting parts of the scripture we talked about today, we didn't even touch on yet. So we got like another 45 minutes to go. You didn't see that coming, did you? No, no, we don't, we don't. But, but one, one of the most exciting and comforting things about the scripture that we covered today is right at the very beginning of verse 28. It's we know. This isn't a whim. This isn't a guess. This isn't a, it's probably true. It's not that. This is a supreme confidence that God is in the kitchen, that God is working right now, that our ultimate purpose is to glorify God. We know this, but we also know 
that these truths are only for those who love him. Now, if you're like me, before I became a believer at age 19, I would have said this, I love God. And we have our opinions. I'm not mad at anybody, but I'm I'm telling you, I was wrong. What Jesus, from his own mouth, what Jesus tells us in his word, Luke 7, 47, if you want to get exact, he reveals this truth that only God knows. He reveals the truth of this. The only people who love God are those who have been forgiven. If you haven't been forgiven, if you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, the payment of sin that occurred by Jesus on the cross, if you haven't received that from God, don't be discouraged. Don't put your head down and walk away. Realize there's an invitation here. There's a welcoming. There's an open arms type of thing going on from Jesus to you. And he's saying, would you come? Would you receive that grace? Would you receive me? That's what he's saying. Today's your day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you that you are in the kitchen, even though, like, we didn't even know it. But God, you are in the kitchen. You are working all things together for good. God, thank you for that. Thank you for that assurance. Thank you for that promise. Please continue, Lord, to conform us to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ. Help us to live for you, Lord. You made us that we might glorify you. That's our ultimate purpose, God. Help us to do just that, that we might glorify you. God, work a miracle in the hearts of those you have in your eyes right now, God. Our eyes are still closed. We're kind of still mid-prayer. I just want to speak to the people within earshot of my voice right now. If you haven't received Jesus yet, if you haven't believed and been ready to receive him as Lord yet, but today, maybe you can't explain it, but today something's different. You're just like, man, I'm ready. I'm ready to become a Christian. I'm ready to put my faith in Jesus. I'm ready to trust him. I'm ready to follow him the best I can. Lord, help me do that. If that's you, let's pray these things together. Maybe you want to say them out loud or whisper them. Maybe you just want to think them in your mind, but let's pray this together. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in your perfect life. I believe in your death. You died for my sins, Lord. And I believe that on the third day, you rose from the grave. I believe that I'm a sinner, Jesus. And I believe that I need you to save me because I can't do it myself. Jesus, I believe you. I believe in you. And I receive you now. Please forgive me my sins. Please give me new life. Thank you, Lord. With our eyes still closed, is there anybody here at any of our campuses Online, is there anybody, man, I received Jesus today. I became a child of a God. I placed my faith in Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We rejoice in you, Father. You've been truly, truly good to us. Amen. Love you guys. Thanks, Bill. For those of you just said, yeah, today's going to be my day to receive Jesus and start this life as a Christ-like cookie. We want to celebrate with you. Can we celebrate with them, those that chose to do that today? Absolutely. Absolutely. And to get you started on the right journey here at Fox River, we want to get you started with this packet. It's called Begin. And as our prayer team comes forward right now, they will have these at the front. We'd like to ask you to step up, grab one of these. They'll get it for you. It'll just get you started in your journey of, with your relationship with Jesus the right way. Maybe you're online or maybe just coming up front is just not comfortable. You can also get this by texting 555-888. That's 555-888. Learn more. One word, learn more, and we'll mail it to you. Our prayer team is coming because all of us at times in our life have burdens that we need to carry with each other. 
Our prayer team loves to share in that, to pour out with you and pray with you and just help carry those burdens. That's what the scripture tells us to do. So if you would, come forward and pray with them. They would love to have you do that, love to do that with you as well. Everybody have a great week. Thank you.